Hello, my name is Stefan Cartman. Welcome to my studio. Today, I'd like to begin a series of video tutorials on how to prepare and perform chamber music remotely. What I mean by that is, well, let me just show you. There's this. this and perhaps even this Okay, well, that's fun and a little silly and perhaps even a little bit crazy. Um, I have to admit that I laughed out loud the first time I saw the video of me giving cues to myself, uh, who was playing with other of myself, and uh, it was a strange, uncomfortable feeling uh, watching clones of yourself play chamber music together, because I had the knowledge that all four of those guys weren't in the room at the same time. So I had the image of how I had to uh, how I had to handle all of the technical aspects of that to get to that final product, and uh, of course it did take a lot of time and energy, but um, but it was you'll have to forgive me because the inspiration for it was so that I could bring a little bit of the uh, uh, of the feeling of playing chamber music together with my colleagues and working on it with my students that I had before the challenges that have been presented to us in our time of the of the uh, of the pandemic and social distancing and such. So uh, my inspiration wasn't to produce some sort of technical oddity. And I, in fact, was a little surprised at how far I was able to go with it. But uh, but what we need as chamber music coaches and as musicians that wish to keep the feeling and the spirit of chamber music alive is some sort of system for using the technology that we have at hand to produce fun projects like this and perhaps even more serious projects. And that's what I'll be talking about uh, in, in this whole video series. Now, that video that, uh, that I shared with you is part of a longer video and the whole piece is there and I'll have that in the comments se section of this video. But the subject of this video is really getting started. So let's talk a little bit about uh, what an overview of a plan to accomplish this goal would be. Um, first of all, I have to say that this is something that would happen over the course of uh, several weeks in the same way that coaching a chamber music group might uh, produce a performance uh, several weeks or even a couple of months uh, or even a semester later in some cases. Um, what happens in this process that we're doing remotely is that we're going to record the tracks and layer them together individually. And I'm already using a word tracks. Um, in, in recording technology, a track is best thought of as a, a vessel in which to put uh, sound. And uh, in our case, we're going to put the sound for one of the parts in one track, and one in another, and one in another, and one in another, and then we're going to play them all together so that we can hear a performance of it. It'll look something like this. And let me put on my earphones so that I can hear what you're hearing because I'm playing this back from my digital audio workstation, which is where I produce my music sounds. So I'm going to play a little bit just of the first of the first cello part and give you an idea what that sounds like. Okay, now if I 
was to take that and put it together with the third cello part, it would sound like this. Okay, and if I add another part to it, it would sound like this. And by the time I add the fourth part to it, that's what the piece actually sounds like. Okay, so by the time we've made a recording of the whole piece, we should be able to remove one of them, play the other three, and if the third cellist is sitting in the room and listening to those other three parts, that third cellist can play something like this with the parts and record it at the same time. Let's try. case I wasn't recording. All I did was mute that third part and play it myself. But I could easily have turned on a microphone and produced the fourth part of that. Getting to the point where it's only one person playing with the other three recorded parts is, is the goal because when you get to that point then you can play the other three parts in your earphones and you can make a video of your part. By the time you put together four videos of that performance that's matching with the original audio performance that you did, well, that really starts to feel like uh, like playing chamber music together. And uh, my first uh, my first goal was just to make an audio recording of it where I could mute some of the other parts and play with them. And my second goal was to make a performance of it through from the beginning of the piece to the end after I knew all of the things that I had to fit with and had rehearsed just like I had done a rehearsal with my colleagues or with my students. And uh, when you get to that final video stage, there's some other things that you need to know in order to put the, uh, put the sound together with the video. But, um, but this is the gist of the project. You don't put the video together until you have a complete audio recording. And so the majority of the preparation time that you have is students uh, or professionals getting together to come up with some sort of a plan for how they mean to record, uh, how they mean to record this piece together. And I believe it has to be more than just a click track where everybody is playing with the same beat and the beat is metronomic and regular and doesn't ever change because that really doesn't give you the feeling of chamber music with other people because you're not reacting to the phrasing uh, you're only guessing as to how your sound uh, how your part sounds with the other parts so that's how we're going to go uh, with with the overall plan of what to do uh, to produce a performance of chamber music online with people that are in different locations and recording things at different times. So I hope you enjoy this series and um, we'll get right on to the next video which is going to talk about actually uh, laying down these tracks and making a plan for who plays first, who plays second uh, and discussing that in rehearsal. Okay, thank you for your attention and I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, look forward to seeing you on the next one if you're interested. Bye.